in, in, in the tradition of uh, understanding the Qur'an, uh, these two appear as very lower level, at the lower level of uh, the tools that were developed for understanding the Qur'an. So they do use uh, philosophical arguments or for philosophical methodology, especially some of the Mufassirs who are also, who are also philosophers, they use, right? Uh, Razi uses a lot of uh, uh, tools of philosophy, uh, including mantik, logic, and the other tools of, uh, of philosophy. But they also point out that uh, because this is a book of guidance, uh, philosophical investigations of the Quran uh, would have a danger of covering the heart with thick layers of theoretical discussions that would prevent the heart from receiving the light that is meant to be the main purpose of the of the Quran to infuse we say Allah man nabir kulubna bil Quran al azim Allah this is the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam bring infuse our hearts with the light of the Quran we we don't want that the thickness, the veils, of, and that's why this beginning dua that I made this morning, that uh, don't make us among those who recite the Qur'an but who are the wretched in the hereafter. Make us those who recite the Qur'an but who are uh, beneficiaries of the recitation, because you can go both ways. The scientific methodology is even more problematic in understanding the Qur'an because the, uh, the tools that are required are not uh, observation, but rather uh, understanding, number one, the language itself, but like what we just did with the word, one word, khalq. Uh, what does the khalq conceptually mean? This is a word in the, in the Arabic language, but what does it conceptually mean? And he gave us a whole list of, Imam Raghu gave us a whole list of conceptual understandings. So these are not observations to reflect, but these are understandings of the language used in the Quran. So the, uh, the observations are there in certain aspects in terms of the creation, for example, as we said, those who reflect on the creations, they reach this understanding that you have not created everything in falsehood. We say this after reflecting on certain aspects. But this, this is so huge, the understanding of the Qur'an is so huge that these two specific methodologies of understanding anything are just a tiny bit of the tools in this whole uh, process that has reached us through the tradition of understanding the Qur'an. So in connection to the same question, like, every person has his own abilities of uh, akal and reasoning, and which is again created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my understanding of something will be totally different or at a different level than yours, right? Or rather raw and everything. So our level of guidance will be different from the same source too. Is it safe to say that? And then how will we, like I mean the source is the same, but we, and we are going to be judged on the same source. But because what Allah has created, my abilities, my understanding of that source is limited to those abilities. So how the judgment will be adjusted or will it be adjusted to our abilities? Let me rephrase the question uh, in a more general sense. And that would be, because there is diversity in human capabilities of understanding something, Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given all human beings the same inner resources, uh, practical observation tells us that we have uh, different understanding, different levels of understandings of the same thing. And how would that difference reflect in the judgment? Because judgment is on the same basis. Of, is that more or less correct? 
the answer is uh, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how are we going to be judged and uh, how would he deal with us is uh, is beyond our understanding the diversity in the actualization of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in the human constitution. When a child is born, is born on fitra. Uh, this the second part of this hadith is also very beautiful to reflect on because the Prophet gives the example of these animals, Bahima. Do you see that their ears were cut off when they were born? No, human beings cut their ears. We come into this dunya with a true different, uh, fundamentally different uh, aspects. One is the actual creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, in the womb upon fitra. But as soon as that creation materializes, the two liquids mix and mingle and produce this and uh, it starts to develop, already there is a genetic code being carried from father and mother. Already there is a cultural codification happening in the environment in which the mother is present after the conception. And this is going back to your... Mm -hmm. the, the hearing that develops before the sight in the womb is hearing a particular language. Mm -hmm. That language is being written in the child's being. That language is already conditioning the thinking abilities of the child because each language comes with its own framework of thinking. We can be very hard, that's why it's so good to have a, more than one language because you break the barriers of thinking. Like each language is a mold in itself. It's, a, it's, it's like you just start feeling so constricted by it because you cannot get out of that mold if you don't know anything more than what the language is saying. Uh, and each, within each language, these uh, Aboriginal people who had a different idea of the word snow than the people who uh, later came. So each, each frame uh, constricts, reduces the potentials. It's called Bilkua. So, uh, Bilkua uh, is uh, is what Allah SWT has given us and then the actualization of that uh, in individual cases. Because Allah SWT knows the conditions in which He has put every single one of us. So the Allah knows but the understanding is that the scale is relative to the scale of judgment is very, very individualized situation. The one who wasn't given the eyes is not going to be asked, what did you see with your eyes? So only Allah SWT knows what the judgment is going to be, but our understanding is that what we strive for, for the ikhlas, the intention with which we strive for, the openness of the heart to be ever receptive to the guidance, the paths of uh, repentance, the paths of uh, uh, humility, knowing that I don't know, All of these are counted, all of these are in the scale. So it's like seeing us on the day and we don't even know what we are putting on the pan, in the pan, but the weight, the reference weight that you mentioned is going to be in reference to that individual. So Allah SWT is going to judge according to what He has granted to each of His creations. Is that somewhat 
Yes. And this question came to my mind because you were explaining that one word, he Lanka, has so much implications. And most of us here cannot understand it because we do not know the language. So we are already at disadvantage. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So the the answer to that is really at the level of uh, at the level of deeds, at the level of actions. The one who knows more is not necessarily more disposed to. It should be, but our experience tells us it's not. It frustrates you, right? Like sometimes it frustrates me that I cannot understand something because of my inability to. Um... Yes, yes. But in any, you know, we are all we are all on the path. Uh, at at a certain time in our path, we are all limited. With our, I'm very limited. I don't really know anything. Like when you when you see yourself. What do I know compared to? I do nothing. So you feel humility, you feel uh, inadequacy, and that can operate in two ways. It can crush and say, okay, you know, there is absolutely no hope for you. You don't know anything. Or it can inspire and say, okay, I start here. Today I have just this tiny bit, I've just learned it and it's going to go stay in me. It's not just here, like I have internalized. This is why I always say experiential learning, something that we have just learned and forever, like until the rest of our time, we know that this, this one word has these levels, and then inshallah, we add little bit, little bit, every day. Yes, you have a question? Yes. topic in itself about uh, uh, so the question is the role of Khalifa and the reversal of uh, the facade the, uh, how the uh, how the corrections can take place and is the role of Khalifa in relation to uh, creation is that of bringing bringing some reversal of the, of the facade. So the answer is yes, uh, there is this role uh, of, the, of the Khalifa. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put in place numerous levels. At numerous levels, he has put in place mechanisms for uh, Correction of the facade. Uh, this is a huge topic in itself, so I'm trying to find the shortest possible answer here. When unless one of the sent uh, prophets. When Allah SWT sent prophets, he, he also 
put a mechanism of fundamental corrections, like at the very base level. When humanity reached a point where no alayhi salam, after 950 years of uh, prophethood, he made that dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't leave anyone on earth because they are now going to give birth to those who would creep increasing the facade. So all of these were known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were all part of the his not they are all part of his knowledge and they are all part of the corrective mechanisms in place. So inshallah we, we devote uh, we will devote a like if Allah gives us the tawfiq and the ability to reflect on the theme of uh, being the Khalifa. Because in the, in the, just in that one passage of Surah Bakara, of the creation of Adam alayhi salam, everything is there for us. Mm-hmm. Like all the fundamentals are there, including the, the language, the Allama yeah. al-Bayan, teaching of the names. And when Allah SWT says he's going to create a Khalifa, Everything is within that passage. Like if we were to just expand on that one passage, that would take oceans of knowledge which we don't have. But even if we try to do that, that will give us the entirety of uh, what our role is here. And that just goes back to. So these are the these are the primary level themes of the Quran. Shall we stop here? If, uh, Oh, my yard is to Suharan. That's what they were saying. I, I lived in my yard. Sorry. Um, inshallah, I will, uh, I will, there is another recording. I will uh, make, put that recording uh, online. At some point, I clicked because there was some noise from the background. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi l'akhirati hasana wa kina azaban nar. Ya Allah, anta halimun kareemun azimun tuhimun akhu. اللهم نبر قلوبنا بالنور الإيمان ونور القرآن يا رب العالمين اللهم افتح لنا أبواب رحمتك اللهم آتي من بيت الكريم في الدنيا والآخرة ربنا لا تزيغ قلوبنا بعد إذ خديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك Rabbi Khfir Barham and Tahir Rakimi. Allah must say, was Sully Mubarakala, see the Muhammad Wala, he was her behind, Rahmatikaya, 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 Rahmatik